Danny's brother, Brian Fencer, is with us now from Detroit, Michigan. Brian, uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. And I imagine it's not easy right now, uh, especially for your parents. So how, how's the family holding up? How's everyone coping? We're, we're, we're hanging in there. A lot of uh, dark humor is getting us through today. Um, you know, as to be expected, it's it's hard it's hard for for parents uh for my parents but uh we're getting through very encouraged with all the support at home here and across the globe it's been pretty unbelievable to see all the support coming in danny is the managing editor of frontier Myanmar. that's an independent news outlet the chief editor believes danny may have been transferred to uh what they call insane prison uh, three years ago, 2018, Frontier, his outlet, reported this. Insane has acquired an infamous reputation, mainly because of the effect on inmates of a lack of hygiene and the regular use of torture, especially when the country was under military rule. Well, Myanmar is back under military rule, so clearly if this is the case, that is a concern. Uh, what have you been able to confirm about his location? Nothing much, unfortunately. We pretty much have uh, the statement from Frontier Myanmar. That's what we've been working off of. That's what we've been using uh, when working with uh, elected officials here in Michigan, uh, Senator Gary, Gary Peters and his team, and uh, some other delegates from the area. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have much information. Definitely trying not to speculate on, on what could be, but just very hopeful with all the support, we'll be getting them out as soon as possible. Uh, was Danny, do you know, was he a hands-on editor? Was he out and about reporting the story on the coup? Or was he mostly sort of back at the office in an oversight role? And the reason why I ask, uh, I'm trying to work out if there was a particular story with his byline which may have sort of angered uh, the military leaders there, or maybe it was just a collective output from Frontier which they didn't like. I'm just, do you have any, any idea here? Not really. Uh, as far as I know, and him and I, we talk a few days a week. So, um, you know, he was at the desk editing. He wasn't boots on the ground at any of the protests. Uh, but, you know, I, I can only assume being a journalist in a country that's run by the military who wants to control a narrative, uh, he was flagged being a journalist when he's at the airport. So uh, can't, can't begin to imagine why it happened. Um, you said you spoke a couple of times a week. Uh, at any point, as the situation in Myanmar has progressively got more violent, it's more dangerous, has he expressed any concern to you about his own safety? Not about his own safety, but he's always very good about giving us a heads up. Hey, this is going to be in the headlines. Everything will be fine. I'll touch base as soon as I can. So uh, it was pretty alarming to have messages from his spouse this morning and, and co-workers with all this, with all this craziness. And so he was at the airport, he was just heading uh, out of Myanmar to try and meet up with, you, with your mum and dad, I think. That was the, was the surprise, right? Yeah, yeah. He was going to uh, quarantine a few days in, in Chicago with, with a friend and then make his way back home here uh, to surprise mum and dad and his niece and nephew. Yeah, last month, the Committee to Protect Journalists said that Myanmar's military regime has almost overnight become one of the worst jailers of journalists worldwide, with at least 40 members of the press held behind bars. It is blunt and inhumane censorship aimed at keeping Myanmar's citizens, the global public, in the dark about the junta's often brutal activities. Um, according to the CP CPJ, all but two of the detained journalists were in fact locals. Both foreign reporters were eventually deported after a fairly short period of time. Does that give you much reason to be hopeful here? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, but I mean, the, the people we've been able to get in contact, um, including his, his spouse, who is a Brazilian diplomat, uh, it's, we're very, very, very hopeful. And again, he's on valid work papers, valid visas, passports, everything. And he was voluntarily in and leaving the country to come visit family. So again, we can't see what, what the issue is. And just in terms of the negotiations, what's happening in terms of uh, trying to secure his release, has there been contact made directly between um, you know, the U.S. State Department and officials in Myanmar? I believe so. Uh, we've been in contact with some people. The State Department is definitely aware of what's going on and is, and is working, working on the issue. Well, um, Brian, we wish you, um, your family, your parents especially, all the best, um, and for a quick release of uh, Danny as well. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate the, the interest and, and all the support. Thank you.